and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube. Uh, for the Demir Control Donation deck, which is going to be our first deck of the day today, um, we have four strong decks that we're going to be playing today that we're going to be playing over in Mythic. We're going to be playing like five matches with each deck, uh, maybe four, four or five matches, depending on, on uh, how much time the games take up. Uh, our first two, we got a couple of control decks, and so that'll be interesting to, to see how control kind of does in our new format. Um, I, I think that, I know uh, some people were asking me why I was calling it a new format yesterday, but with the bannings to the three green cards that we had yesterday, um, it is a new standard format than what we had before, and so that's why I kind of refer to it as a new format. But we're, we're first going to start with a donation deck that was made by a viewer, uh, made by excerpts here, that uh, they're playing Demir Control, and they've been having success in Mythic with this list. And it looks pretty good. Our mana is going to be kind of tough, but I, I think this is about as good as we can have with the mana. we got three Fable Passage over here, so we have, we have a lot of dual lands with um, basically the 11 uh, dual sources there, because you know we have Jace, Gadwick, with the t both of those being the triple blue, um, you know, double blues with Sabotage, I guess Brazen Borrower kind of counts. I mean, well, Cavalier of Gales, another triple blue, more double blue with Kefnet. So a lot of blue, but then also a lot of black. We got double black with Swift End and Murderous Rider, double black with Ritual of Soot, and obviously all the blue black spells. So even though we're a two color deck, we're kind of stretching um, how far the two color mana base can go. But uh, this, this deck looks pretty good. You know, we have our a lot of cheap interaction, which is always good. We have um, card advantage with Gadwick, Jace, Cavalier of Gales, Chemister's Insight, you know, all that kind of stuff. Liliana at the top end. Um, I like what we got going on here. Over in the sideboard, we have four Cry of the Carnarium. I love that against the... Um, the Witch's Oven Cauldron Familiar decks that are pretty popular right now. Um, it may be that maybe we should have one or two of these in the main deck because of how popular those decks are. But I like that we have all four over there. Obnixus' Cruelty can help out quite a bit against the Gruul decks uh, with all their haste creatures. Um, you know, Narset and Negate against other control decks. And then Noxious Grasp also against Gruul. Golgari Adventures still around and I, I really like these exile effects against Golgari adventures as well and so we got some more noxious grasps over there um and then uh yeah there we go so that's that's our deck um you know these these adventure creatures are definitely good interaction and then threats afterwards um yeah this looks like this could be a pretty sweet deck so again so yeah we're gonna go play uh some games over in mythic Either four or five matches, depending on how long they take. And we'll see how it does. Uh, question about Cry's last effect. effect. If they sacrifice Cat and then you cast Cry, does it retroactively exile the Cat? Yes, it does. Yep. So if, if the Cat is on the battlefield, during your turn, it's going to get exiled by Cry of the Carnarium. They can't do anything to keep it from getting exiled. Uh, the only thing they can do is make sure it's not on the battlefield during your turn. You know, sacrifice the cat during their own turn and just hold it in the graveyard. And then at end step, they can, like, you know, bring it back and then sacrifice it again and keep it in the graveyard. That's the only thing they can do there. All right, so we'll keep Dismal Backwater. Um, I think... I think we just kind of keep that, keep Watery Grave. I think I'm just going to get rid of this Fable Passage. Uh, Bivalence with a Tier 1 sub. Thank you so much there, Bivalence. Thanks for that support. So obviously this is not a great time to have Drown in the Lock. It's not going to counter or kill anything. I don't need to um, don't need to like play a land here to keep up Drown in the Lock because it, it doesn't do anything until my opponent plays some cards.
So are they going to be Teamer or just Blue Red? I guess it could be Jeskai also. Crackling Drake. We played some Mizzet Drakes last night. So they have four cards in their graveyard now, so now Drown in the Lock would counter. Now it would counter a Crackling Drake. Oh, thank you so much, Bivalens. Well, thanks for stopping by over here. Phoenix. It's annoying. Second Phoenix? Must be nice. This is a great matchup for Cry of the Carnarium. Yeah, I'm glad we got the four of those in the sideboard. I mean, I might as well attack for two and then take two, right? Like, it's. I still stay at 13. As far as just like the damage, the difference in damage between Electromancer and Murderous Rider, it's the same damage there. Mm. I guess I actually just kind of kill this thing. Actually, too. Yeah, how do you do donation decks? Um, okay, yeah, there's there's information down in the info panel if you go to like the the whole the donate info panel, um, or like you know, and in, uh, in the information underneath the stream. I don't think I really have anything in the main deck for this. Uh, but basically, yeah, just just donate. Um, you know, use that link there. And then, um, and then it put the link to your deck list and what day you want me to play it, and which slot for a second, third, or fourth. Yeah, historic day on Thursday. It's gonna be pretty sweet. We're gonna have. Uh, new decks are going to be playing the new historic cards and everything, too. Uh, the the link, the link to donate is right there. Yeah, Cavalier of Gales, Kefnet, they could do some work for us. I mean, my only hope right now is that they don't have three spells to be able to replay to get these phoenixes back. Um, but then, yeah, if we could get a good blocker. It's not a good blocker. I 
<laughs> yeah, sometimes you don't get your card draw. It's all good. All right, so yeah, Narset is all is awesome too, um, keeping them from being able to do all their draw effects. Uh, we'll get rid of these Ritual of Soots. Get rid of the Tyrants. Corn. Right? Maybe maybe not as so fast. Um, Legion's End. I mean, all it's all Legion's End's doing is Electromancer. Um, which we have all these cries and everything. Uh, Scorn, I'll just kind of do it in bouncing. I kind of want to just get rid of those things, but the problem is that's a lot of my two mana cards. Negate's not bad in this matchup, though. We'll keep, play some Negates. We'll take out Liliana. Um, I don't know. Liliana, like, they're probably going to have Niv Mizzet here, and Liliana can do some work there. I think I want to take out Brazen Borrower. Let's play, you know, have these Cryo Canariums and Cruelties and stuff instead. Mm. Alright, so this is 63. Yeah, let's take a Jace out. Maybe both Jaces. Um... All right, we'll go both Jaces. I'm thinking a Gadwick or an Insight. Or the Lily. We'll just we'll just play one Lily. I don't think we need to play both. Hey, Giovanni. I feel pretty good about our chances here for games two and three. All right. Uh... Now we put this in the back. Any pointers for the current metagame? Um, it, not exactly. Man, Narset would be so good. Another great hand for our opponent, all these ops. When you land. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, you know, we'll have to kind of just play some more. You know, like, it's basically, it's just been one day with this format so far. Um, so I don't have any great pointers after one day, honestly. Um, I think having... Having a good plan for which is of index seems like a necessity right now. That's the the main thing I have right now. We've been pretty fortunate being able to deal with two improbable alliance. That's a really good sideboard card. I'm definitely worried about that card for game three. Oh gosh, well, I guess for game one, or game two. That's a great sideboard card. Man, and now we don't have lands. Yeah, these are these have definitely been unfortunate games for us. Do I think the London Mulligan rule now is better than before for top players? Any, any, uh, anything in the game that has you make a decision, and this is for any game, not specific to Magic. Any anything in any game that has you make a decision is going to favor better players because better players will make better decisions. Um, a higher amount of the time. So 
So London Mulligan, you know, you're making a decision. Um, it's going to favor better players. Uh, the old Mulligan rule, you had the scry decision. Same thing, though. Um, the London Mulligan rule, the London Mulligan is arguably a harder decision to make. But. Wasted a bunch of spells there. It's gonna be harder to get back these phoenixes now. Basically, digging for Cry the Carnarium. Narset dig looks at four cards plus gains us three life. Where Chemistry's Inside would just look make us look at two cards. I won't forget our time together. Of course, our opponent has a great draw. Why not? The previous mulligan rule to the London one was you just you just get six cards. You don't get seven cards in your hand. You just get six cards, and then if you keep, then you look at the top card and decide if you, you know you scry the top card and decide if you want to put that on the top or the bottom. All right, well, pretty bad luck for us in those games. You know, both mulligans. And one time, just tons of lands, and then the other time, no lands. So, we got magic We'll see if we get to have a good mix of spells and lands for this next match. Hey, Dizzy. Yeah, the historic stream should be a lot of fun. Correct. Yep, if you mold twice, you would look at five cards and then scry one. <laughs> Just have to mulligan every hand here. All right, well, 26 land deck, of course, so we'll see if we draw them this time. And I guess I'm putting back the... It's either putting back Jace or Gales. You know, like, we're putting one of these two cards back, and... Um, it, you know, depending on the different matchup, one of these would be better than the other. Uh, Cavalier Gales does a whole lot better job, you know, does a good job in combat and everything. Obviously, it costs another mana. It's possible. It's possible that we're going to, like, maybe miss land drops and kind of be behind. And by the time we get triple blue, we need to play a 5-5 creature to help us stabilize. I think that's a, a pretty good chance of what how this game may play out. And so I'm going to keep Cavalier over Jace. If we had, if we had Watery Grave and Island in hand, I would be keeping Jace.
Well, these brazen borrowers and these brazen borrowers have, have not looked very good. Now that really has this drowned in the lock. That's kind of because we we don't really have anything to do. I mean, bouncing Risen Reef doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, they don't have triple green. That that helps. Yeah, SDN, you, yeah, you can. Yeah, I don't mind deckless links. My opponent has two more lands in play, three more creatures in play, and still has just as many cards in hand. There's one thing that Risen Reef and Cavalier of Thorns does is it beats blue blue black control decks. This is a really tough matchup for us. Yeah, Deckmaster's working again. beating a million man over here. Um, I, I don't know if I need all these Cry the Carnariums. Probably don't. It's great against Risen Reef, but not really against the rest of the stuff they're going to be doing. Um, I wish Cruelty would exile Cavalier of Thorns, for sure. That'd be nice. This is going to be a tough matchup for us. Hmm. What else are we taking out? Do we even want to bounce stuff back to their hand? The only th the only reason why we'd want to is, is the copies they make, like a quasi duplicate copy. I'll keep one borrower um, just because of quasi duplicate. Um, and <laughs> it's not like I really want to draw it though. 
Okay, this is the first time that we've had three lands and four spells, or four, sp four lands and three spells. This is the first time we can keep a seven card hand. So yeah. Yeah, sorry excerpts on the, the real tough mana situations we've had so far. It's kind of a, a good thing we're doing ranked and not a league, though, because if we were doing a league and we just lose our two matches, we're, we're done. Um, I mean, it's definitely just Paradise Druid. All right, a couple of good thought erasures. All right, I think I'm just going to be playing Borrower here and start attacking for three. Please don't name Fable Passage. Darn. At least we can just discard it to the second part of Chemister's Insight, assuming they disdainful stroke this part. Well, yeah, they, yeah, they could have named Castle Vantress, that's true. Hmm. Alright, bunch of disdainful strokes over there. So shocking so we can activate Castle Lock Twain and cast Sinister Sabotage. Get him, Brazen Borrower. I think we kept the one borrower and took out the Kefnet. Alright, so we can just hold up double sabotage. And we should be good. Gotta get two more attacks in. <laughs> yeah, this 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 game is definitely a lot better for us. We actually got to hit land drops, play spells. Definitely worked out a lot better. Now we have two lethal attackers and double counter back and double counter spells. Uh, 
All right, so a bunch of agent of treacheries and mass manipulations, a whole bunch of disdainful strokes. Maybe Borrower is just my best offense. Like, maybe I shouldn't be playing Liliana. I mean, that's just too slow against... against a bunch of agent of treacheries and mass manipulation and like all the ramp that they have and everything. Um, and of course the disdainful strokes. And they have spyglass. Does feel like I should be playing these negates also though. Where would I fit in negates if I want to play negates? Got a cry. Cry's real good against Paradise Druid and Risen Reef, though. Maybe a drown in the lock. Maybe a Gadwick. Maybe a land on the draw with cutting our curve some. I do kind of want to play the second cry. Oh well, we'll just play the one. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the blast down. We're gonna go down to 25 land. Since we're on the draw and we trimmed our curve. Cool. Got enough lands. Yeah, ritual set so takes out the two mana. 03 and Nissa lands as well. Like where Cry is only Paradise Druid and Risen Reef. Yeah, Grafter's Cage can be a good sideboard card depending on, you know, what you're playing. Um, it is. You know, it stops the cat from coming back. So it does a good job of that. Hmm. That's a good draw. Shifting Ceratops, I can just kill with Murderous Rider. They only have one green source right now anyway, though. There's one. But honestly, these, these two are going to be kind of problematic. Makes playing Jace not really, not really something I want to do. Mm, that's a good draw. Ugh. Pass turn. Okay, that's good enough. Not a green source, it's good.
I'm glad we cut a land. It's either Gadwick for three or, you know, or just inside again. Um... I really don't want Cavalier of Thorns to resolve and me not be able to kill it right away. Mm. Basically, the thing about Insight is we could hit... Alright, we're just going to pass the turn. Insight could, could get us Noxious Grasp or even... Uh, oh no, not quite... Not ca not quite the drown in the lock. So, tyrant scorn, I guess. They can't just agent a treachery that lands, of course. They can just take my castle, Vantress. Please don't have a green source or anything, even though you just scried something to the top. Okay, that's like nothing. That's cool. Dang. I still have nothing. <laughs> Come on, deck. I don't th I don't think I should give my opponent this castle. Brazen Borrowers would also be good, where we can rebounce our, our things that they steal. That's <laughs> we didn't just find islands, we found a whole continent. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true, they cannot activate Castle Lock Twain, that's true. So they would take mine. All right, so now, unfortunately, I don't have removal right away for the castle or for the cavalier. So whenever we do kill it, they get something back. Man, so many steel effects. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be playing the Murderous Router. Maybe you need to hold up both of these. So I guess, you know, like, we have one covered, but, you know, if they top deck something else. The thing is, they're probably just using a lot of their mana for mass manipulation. And I guess Drown in the Lock's a better card to hold on to. So my plan, yeah, my plan is to kill Cavalier, they get something back, and then I Jace tick up on them and mill it back over. That's my plan. I'm not getting any value out of the surveil. I guess I'll just use Drown on the Lock then. Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Oh, actually, I should probably use this because then I can, I can still have Drown on the Lock available for next turn. Oh. 
Perfect. So we'll still have the Drown and Lock up as a counter spell. Alright, it's a bunch of Agent of Treacheries in there. We've gone through uh, three Cavalier... Or no, yeah, three Cavalier of Thorns. So that's that's big time. Three Agent of Treachery, three Cavalier of Thorn, a Mass Manipulation, all those are gone. <laughs> Thanks, Mick Savage. Okay. Uh, Tamio, also annoying... So our counter spell's already gone. So hopefully we don't need to counter anything again. Hopefully they don't have another good threat. So I'm kind of out of cards now. Give me some time. They didn't add mana with the Leafkin to like activate Castle. They just let me tap it. Hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, whenever Drown the Lock's fully online like this, thanks to the Cavalier, then yeah, it's just better than just a regular old, like just even just, yeah, just original counter spell. Yeah, scry first. Do that. <laughs> they should not be scrying first. They should just let this happen. And it's just going to mill over two cards. How you play that. See, like they, they didn't get them any value. All right, well, speaking of no value, not the best draws there. So if I go blue castle and black castle, I only have one mana left. Oh, come on. Ugh. On the top deck. I guess we're just gonna draw. Nope. More lands. Not even punished for setting for not setting up their draw stub. Finally negate. All right, looking for Brazen Borrower. There's Brazen Borrower. Just an illusion. It's a matter of give and take. Hey, Spanky with the tier one sub. Thank you so much there. Mm. Thank you so much for that support. Uh, for an entire year now, Spanky. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, we need a like we'll still be we're still not doing the worst here. All right, so one of those cards is a land in hand. Yep, so that's that's the plan. So we're going to bounce Scadwick now with Tyrant Scorn. Ugh.
I could also just bounce Murderous Rider and then Rider kill the Gadwick. Or we could just set everything. Sure, I don't get my Gadwick, but whatever. We're fine. I'll just keep this Tyrant Scorn up. For future Risen Reefs and, and the and the like. Alright, give me this lifelink back. I, you know, definitely could have bounced Gadwick back to my hand first, but I think we're doing okay on cards. We're at 22 cards in our library right now. They're at 25. They've only played... They've had two Manipulation so far, three Cavalier of Thorns, three Agent of Treachery. That's the third manipulation. So they, they've gone through three treachery, three manipulation. They're just playing four of each of those. All right, GG's. After the first game, I did not think we were really going to be winning that after the first game, to be honest. But then we actually had <clears throat> a good mix of land and spells for games two and three. And we got there. Okay. Um, let's see what this mastery thing's about. Mastery tree... We got Slaying Fire. All right, working our way there. <laughs> yeah, deck looked a lot better whenever we when we didn't have terrible mana problems. All right, I'm gonna reset Arena. As y'all know, my my computer's been struggling recently, um, but we're gonna just reset it. Um, we'll see what happens on Thursday also with, um, with the update, but all right, we're one on one. The thought erasures were amazing. Those games two and three. Thought Erasure card, pretty good. And I guess, you know, not ha them not having Veil of Summer at all definitely makes that matchup easier. Veil of Summer was a, you know, a really big problem, really big problem for the cyborg games. All right, good mana again. Blast Zone's in here, of course, because of the oven, the Witch's Oven decks. No, thought there's no there's no rotation until next year. So Thought Erasure is going to be in standard until um, the fall set next year. Rotation happens once a year whenever the fall set's released. Mardu. So yeah, Thought Erasure is going to be in standard for a while. So I want a Legion's end that. I may want a Legion's end that. Let's see what happens here. It's possible they play like a Rotting Regisaur. You know, a real big three drop. And then I want to Tyrant score in the three drop.
So while I'd rather, I, I would have rather killed the acclaimed contender and then Legions ended this 3-1, but But, um, you know, I don't want them to be able to get extra cards with a claim contender. So now because they discard, now my Drown in the Lock is turned on. But I think I just Murderous Rider. Can I just take this? Probably. Have I ran into the Angel Fires of Invention deck? No, I have not seen an Angel Fires of Invention deck. Oh my gosh. Why'd I tap the blue mana? Uh, I messed that up. That's fine. Can you not just use this mana and then cast this? All right, thank you. Try to do that correctly. So yeah, basically, I just try to keep these rotting registers in play as much as I can to make them just discard them. Or to discard a bunch of things. So, you know, like that, that game they discarded a land and a claim contender, an ember cleave. Pretty cool. These adventure creatures. Hey, what's up, Boot? Bleh. Should have kept Blast Zone on one. Oh, I'm just going to be Legion's ending this. And holding up Sabotage and Drown in the Lock still. Yeah, the adventure creatures, yeah, they, that is kind of a nice way to play control. I agree. We'll get the surveil in here.
Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. Germany just won 6-1? to one? Man, you told me, like, at the beginning of the league, you told me they were up 2-1. They scored four goals in the last, you know, like, 80 minutes or so. That's pretty good. All right, so Cruelty does not kill um, Rotting Regisaur. It's possible they would sideboard out Rotting Regisaur. If I was them, I'd be boarding out Rotting Regisaur. Discarding, like, your whole hand isn't isn't great. I want to get rid of the Negate. Um, obviously, we want some Cries. I don't know if we need, like, a ton of Cries, though. They have... I don't know if we need all four, basically, is what I mean. I have a lot of creatures that don't die to cry. Um, Thought Erasure's value goes down pretty quickly. But it's, it's our best card to have on turn two. I think I'm gonna cut an inside of Jace, a Liliana, get another, get a cruelty in here. Gonna cut one Gadwick also for another cruelty. Okay, Let's give us a try. So your, your design philosophy for the deck was to kind of distribute a lot of different win conditions into the deck. It's only really possible with these adventure creatures since they double up. Yeah, that's the adventure creatures definitely have helped control decks for sure. Because, yeah, you get the removal and later on then you get the threat also <clears throat> after you stabilize to close games out. Hey, Agonava. I need a water. I forgot to get a water before the stream today. Gadwick's good there too, because yeah, Gadwick's just a huge card advantage engine, but then also a creature. <clears throat> and they can attack, and also just slows the opponent down a whole lot with all the tapping and stuff too. Gadwick's a really solid card. All right, opponent, what do you want to do? All right, my opponent's not really doing anything. I mean, am I having connection issues here? Or are they just choosing to go first or not? I feel like it's supposed to be them choosing to go first or not right now, right? There we go. Well, what I was going to say is I was going to go go grab a, a water real quick, but looks like never mind. I don't have time to do that. So they, what, mold the five? So they got a plan. Got a double goblin guide here. Hey, Joe.
Uh, no, Joe, I've, I've never been asked to play one of those events. Okay, we're going to go ahead and clear this up with Ritual of Set. Get the two for one. I did take an extra three damage there to do that. Like, if I would have drowned in the locked, then they would only be attacking with for one. So, honestly, maybe I was supposed to be doing that. Oh, that would have been two two more lands. Am I supposed to just be targeting myself because we could maybe get a chemist's insight in the graveyard? Maybe I am. It's a matter of give and take. Man, my opponent. Had a terrible draw here. They they mulled to five, and now all they have are lands, including we milled over two lands. That's really unlucky for my opponent. This will come in handy. Free insight. I think normally I'd be targeting my opponent, but we're in just a situation with having all this stuff. But because because the reason why you'd want to target the even though you could get a free insight here with a control deck, you kind of need all your cards. Like you don't want to you don't want to lose cards because you have different situational um, interaction. And so like maybe you need whatever interaction piece at whatever time, and you want to have the ability to draw into everything. So you don't usually want to mill yourself but I have I guess it's not double hard counter they have five cards over there and plus yep milling them does make your drown in the lock better but I think we got this just fine What a terrible draw for my opponent. That's definitely one that they can be upset about. <laughs> Mold a five and then just drew nothing but lands. I saw like 11 lands and like four spells. Oh yeah, I was not going to counter the Rimrock. Come on, that would be too mean. Um, didn't want to do that. Hopefully my opponent's playing a slower deck. Now just play a creature on turn one and I die. All right, Temple of Epiphany usually means a slower deck, so that's good. Hmm.
All right, so it looks like Jess guy fires. Um, we're gonna pass here. Because basically, I don't want to thought erasure and take, you know, Cavalier Gales are drawn from dreams, and then they just go, they they just top deck to fairy and just go Sacred Foundry to fairy, and then I'm just shut down. That would be a nightmare. Like that's how I would lose the game. So we're gonna just wait a turn. We're gonna just get this dismal backwater in play, wait a turn, and then I'll have thought erasure plus negate the next turn. I could have just lost the game. Yeah, that was a good call, good call. The Steferis are rough. Little ditty about Jack and Diane. Football star. Try this. That was great. Exactly what I wanted to draw was an island there. Got rid of a Kenrith, that's cool. Life goes on. Alright, draw three Gadwick or get Lily in play. Decisions, decisions. I'm gonna go draw three Gadwick. Yeah, tough call. Looks like Chat was pretty split on that. If I let the Cavalier of Gales resolve, you know, they get to put, like, they get to draw three, then put two bad cards back on top that I mill over with Jace. Yep, exactly. That's, yep, I want removal and um, counter magic and stuff like that. So Gadwick helps dig towards those cards. Hey, what's up, Frank? Chandra. Chandra. Shanandrea. Let's think this thing. Well, I can't counter Chandra. Also don't have counter magic anyway. Let's just get Liliana in play. This looks like a fun new toy. Give them more to worry a boot. Get out of my way. I'm burning up. I here. Oh, emblem. Wow. Hot for you. Oh I guess Yeah, I guess that was only six loyalty over there. This Good health is easy to find in war. Ugh. Reduced to embers. So shocking in here so I can chemistry's insight and have two mana available. Mm, didn't help. 
you know, we could find like Drown in the Lock and things like that. I had no idea I could do that either. Sweet. We finally we found a thought erasure. I was gonna be able to take the fires. So that was good. Okay. So we want negate Narset. It's not very much to bring in. We could play Noxious Grasp that all it all it does is kill Teferi. I could play that or I could play Scorn, where Scorn can kill a dragon token from Sarkin. But I guess that oh they're playing a bunch of cavaliers, aren't they? Cruelty Exiles Cavaliers. Yeah, they got Kenrith. I guess Grasp kills Kenrith. Cruelty could exile. Yeah, they're not going to be able to pump it. Yeah, so I guess Cruelty just gets rid of Cavaliers. And Kenrith. So yeah, let's play one of those. Um, do I play more than one Cruelty? There's something I'm supposed to be taking out here. Do we do we take out a Liliana? Liliana does seem very expensive and slow. Let's take out one Lily. Usually play all three. Then what what else would you cut here then? Like Kefnet? Yeah, Kefnet's terrible for this matchup. I like Borrower. Borrower's cool. Yeah, Kefnet's just, just really, really bad against Teferi. I really don't want to be playing Kefnet in this matchup. And it's smaller than their Cavalier, so it doesn't really block anything. So yeah, we'll just take that card out. This game's pretty poor. Drown the Lock's not, like, turned on or anything. Hmm... Can we just get more lands? Yeah, bouncing yeah, bouncing borrower with time wipes really nice. Same with Gadwick. There we go, more lands, good. Guess I should have kept the swamp. I had island on top. The only real reason to have the double black is uh, swift end. If they have their own narset, it's gonna be it's gonna make my cavalier gales look real bad. Take up. Take up. Take up. 
Darn. If you wish to see it with thoughtfulness before action. That's the other problem with playing Swift End. Don't get to grab that Swift End with Narset. Making this up as I go. If you show remorse, I'll That's show cool. restraint. I was gonna have to I was gonna have a real hard time dealing with that other one in play anyway. Nothing. Um I think normally I'd want to play Jace oh, here. All right, we got a backup Narset, so I can. I was gonna say I'm a little scared of them killing my Narset. But now we're good. We could play the Jace. Start filling up their graveyard. Turn on Drown the Lock. We got a backup Narset. It's very good. Narset is obviously great against Blue Cavalier, if they have Blue Cavalier. Tilt. Come on, play Blue Cavalier. Blue Cavalier. <sighs> Gotta go to the skies. Get that get those gales. Oh, I thought that was it. That was all sad. I thought that was it. So basically, whatever they'll get, we'll just thought rager away. Here, um. yep. Watch thought rager that thing away. Let's try this. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna space this like where I go. Thought rager first. Devout decree. Liliana, I guess. Yeah, I'll take Brazen Borrower. So I want to do the, the Scry. I want to do the Surveil and then draw, then Surveil again. Um, however, I don't care to Thought Erasure either of those cards. So I want to bounce to Fairy and then Thought Erasure it away. Um, does mean I need more mana. I guess I play this thing. I really hope they don't have a haste creature. Those who cannot perceive beyond the okay. meditate and prepare. Um these aren't bad. Am I supposed to be These are all pretty reasonable. Am I supposed to be bouncing fires and... No, I, I feel like I'm supposed to bounce to fairy, right? Which one do I get rid of? Getting rid of fires well, makes them have a whole lot less mana, of course. But I, I kind of need to be able to play instant speed stuff. My hand's a lot better if I get rid of Teferi. I'll protect you. It's how you play the hand you're dealt. Hmm. 
Now I wish I would have had that other thought razor. Keep an open mind. Definitely wanted to land. Ah, uh, Kenrith. Boo. Boo. You're a good card. You're not a land. Oh, I'm still gonna keep you. You're a good card. All right, so they can kill Narset, unfortunately, and hopefully not have another creature. Hopefully they don't just draw another creature. Uh, I guess they have the Fey. Activate Kenrith and uh, with the haste and activate Castle still. I would assume they would want to discard those cards to put Faye back into their hand, though. Basically, we should be good here. I like our I like where we're at. We're gonna cruelty the Kenrith, have counter spell available for next turn. And then if we get to untap, we can have a lot of counter spells available. I still have <laughs> listening to Todd talk about his cards is like listening to someone talk about their pet. Or talk to their pet. Alright, come on, land. Land, land, land. Let's try this. Still no land? Alright, well, we're discarding Cavalier of Gales. I guess I don't really have to kill Kenrith, do I? Yeah, I probably do. Obviously, I can just kill the Fey right now. I'd rather have Counterspell up, though. I don't have enough pets. I got my two puppers and Hawkeye. <laughs> Who's a good card? You're a good card. Yes, you are. <laughs> hey, Morgan. All right, I like the double scry bottom. That would probably be my English name. If I was born in London. Double scribe bottom. No. Never gonna keep anything on top. Lands are for losers. Hey, there's a land. Let's think this. Through. 
All right, now we are in complete control. Hey, that's awesome, Super Sick Bird, saying, I've been playing your Selesnya Knights deck. Absolutely love how fresh it is, and it and just dumps creatures with tree out. Yeah, that deck's a lot of fun to play. I like Selesnya decks. We're playing it later on. I'm going to try some updates without having, you know, with no Once Upon a Time now. It's a matter of giving. Could just cruelty that they get to cycle away this thing. All right, that was pretty impressive. Turns out activating Jace turn after turn is pretty good. Getting that extra card, you know, every turn for you know tons of turns in a row. Very very good. All right, so we'll play one more. Let's let's reset. Yep, yep, a lot like Big Teferi was in blue-white. Yeah, we don't get the untapped two lands, but the mill two is pretty nice of uh, just slowly taking win conditions away from our opponent as well, too. All right, one more. All right. Amored Ego does not shut down Fires of Invention decks entirely. Like, think about your opponent's deck that we just had there. They have Red Cavalier, Blue Cavalier, Kenrith. And uh, Fae of Wishes. Plus, if they have, um, you know, I don't know if they had if they you know boarded in things like Chandra or other Planeswalkers. Um, like one, you know, an unworthy go isn't going to shut them down. And also just trades one for zero, or like Omnixless Cruelty just trade once for one. You know, gets rid of the Kenrith that's in play. All right, need another land. Unfortunately, I was hoping to draw the land there so I would know if I need to fetch for blue or for black. But we're going to fetch for blue. All right, team of reclamation. Def definitely fetch for blue. Uh, those are two bad draws. These are not cards that I want in this matchup. Please play stuff. I, I don't think we're winning this game. And even games two and three, they usually play a ton of mystical disputes. Alright, that's good. Kind of felt like just slamming Kefnet there. It's just a 4 5. It's not really doing a whole lot. Obviously, they just have main deck mystical dispute. We're dead. Alright, and that's game. We are not, not going to be beating this Wilderness Reclamation. Fortunately, having 10 mana is better than having 
five. You know, and the next turn they'll have fourteen mana. We're obviously sideboarding out Kefnet immediately. So looks like this looks to be a pretty tough matchup for us. Does not look like we have enough stuff for this this matchup. I don't really even want these Lilianas, but we don't have other cards that I want. Cruelty is Cruelty is not really playable. Yeah, Teamer Reclamation does a great job of beating other blue decks. Because they just get so much mana, get to, you know, play so many instant speed stuff. Um, yeah, they're it's very good at, at beating blue decks. Hey, Yura. Yeah, I would recommend. Yeah, Ashana, I'm I'm playing. Yeah, I'll be playing that Selesnya deck later on. And if you want to, if you want to see my deck list, um, you can check that out. I would definitely recommend playing another, especially if you're losing to control, playing another Once Upon a Time. Or sorry, sorry, that was the card that was banned. Um, playing another, the Great Henge. There we go. I think the Great the Great Henge is. Uh, is good there. You should have shifting ceratops in the sideboard. Yeah, this is this is ideal certainly. Them playing mystical dispute and me not playing mystical dispute is a huge difference. I don't think there's just a singular card that you just replace once upon a time with in Adventure Decks. I think you need to play another land, at least one more land, maybe two, depending on the exact Adventure Deck and how many lands you're playing and stuff like that. And then... Um, Hey, Bjorn again. Thanks for that tier one sub. Um, and then yeah, you kind of just just fill it out with with other spells besides besides that. Kind of depending on what, um, you know, just what what your deck's like. But there's there's not just a single you take out once upon a time and you now play this card kind of thing.
And Matthew with the Twitch Prime sub. Thanks for also resubbing there, Matthew. Our fourth sub of the day. These mystical disputes are just so great. It's gonna be hard being on the draw and beating mystical dispute, you know, like it was still so good on for them being on the draw. With them being on the play and being able to have a little bit more mana than having dispute, it's gonna be tough for us. Oh yeah, yeah, Gadwick and blue white decks with yeah, pick it up with Teferi, time wipe, that kind of stuff. This is very good. I mean, I guess I could just play the island here so that they can't, you know, to be able to have three mana to pay for dispute with sabotage. I think that's a poor sideboard choice for our opponent. I don't think they should have Love Struck Beast in their in their deck. I think that's over sideboarding. I don't think that's a, an important card for them in this matchup. What's up, Key Rooker? Key Rooker. Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there. We got a brand new sub. Filling up those hype boats in the chat. I did put Dismal Backwater on top. That's what I did. Well, we got a game. We had an awesome hand. We drew Gadwick at the perfect time into Cavalier of Gales. My opponent never drew Wilderness Reclamation. And we got a game. Okay. Got Thought Razor again right away. Yeah. Yep, control decks usually have answers for Gideon. You want to find things that draw cards, uh, for the most part, or or have haste. Ooh, no mystical dispute. All right, one reclamation out of here. The past, 
Legends and hone your prowess. Sinister Sabotage is more powerful, but I already have a Sabotage. I just want something a little cheaper. Um... Hmm. Meditate and prepare. So... Please don't have another one of those. Don't have that either. Um, so you said you think this may be your toughest matchup current metagame. Maybe you should cut one grasp and two. One cry and one grasp for two mystical dispute in the sideboard. I would not cut cry at all. I think there's a, a lot of cat oven decks. I wouldn't cut any cries. Um, I think you could cut a grasp and maybe an omnixil cruelty. I think you could cut those for mystical disputes. Um, too many black sources. If if I had another blue source, I would maybe play the Nars head and hold up sabotage. Yeah, two disputes enough. They get to the point where they have a whole lot of mana and can, can pay for mystical dispute. It's, it's really only good early. Yeah, it is good against a fairy decks and flash and stuff like that too. What happened there? Did they just try to copy? What? They try to copy their explosion instead of copying my Sinister Sabotage? I guess. Train every day. No one put thoughtfulness before action. Yes, yeah, so they they wrong. Yeah, they chose the wrong target. This explosion costs more than. Like the explosion costs more than three. Wait, they copied Sabotage? But then... Okay, yeah, because you can only... Co okay, because, yeah, you can't copy that. So they copied Sabotage, but then what? They targeted their own Sabotage? What? How'd they... What happened?
Oh yeah. They didn't counter their own explosion because my sabotage resolved on their explosion, didn't it? You think they targeted their own explosion? I think you can only copy things that cost four or less. Like, I don't think it's even an option for them to target their own explosion. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. We're doing okay right now, but it's not like this game's locked up. It's not like it's not like we're certainly going to win right now. Just the trick for this. This was overwhelming. So I let it resolve because I was going to be killing it with Gadwick. So it was basically, you know, all, all that card was was just, um, was just three mana, look at the top four, and put a spell into their hand. That's all that card was. The problem, yeah, definitely consider playing the Rider as just a lifelinker. But the problem with if I would have done that, then if they if they played Niv Mizzet, um, I don't know, I would have like the Drown on the lock for it. But I just want to get just get more cards here. Yeah, that hurts. Definitely hurts. So they get to kill my Narset. I mean, they could kill Gadwick if they want. Oh, right. They don't get to actually draw cards. Never mind.
They don't get to kill anything. Alright, but unfortunately, because I played that Gadwick, I had to use my Drown in the Lock and not the Murderous Rider. So I don't have Drown in the Lock anymore. Lose five life to a castle right now. I just have to be worried about them this. top decking their fourth the fourth explosion, but looks like we're good to go now. I'm not countering Chemister's inside, it's just it's one card because of Narset. I I do think the ambushers are good cyborg cards. Um There's two right there. I'm not sure like for this matchup. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they really need their creatures. Games two and three, but um, they only had like the two ambushers. Like it seems like, it seems like that's all they they had extra that maybe they don't really need. Our, my Narset just really shut down my opponent this game. This is still your turn, bud. So yeah, Narset was so clutch there to shutting down um, so many draws with Chemistry's Insights and everything like that. And obviously, okay, to be honest, we should have lost that game. Like, let's be honest. Um, if my opponent plays their explosion like they were supposed to with the copy there, and if they draw six cards there, we, we're going to lose that game. So honestly, if my opponent didn't misclick, we most likely would have lost. I guess it wasn't it wasn't for sure for sure, but we most likely should have lost that if my opponent didn't misclick. Hey, what's up, Matu? So you know, so uh, yeah, so I do think that's pretty that could be a pretty rough matchup. Um, so you were saying you were t you were thinking about maybe taking out a grasp and a cruelty and playing just for for blue decks playing two more d two disputes. Which I wouldn't mind that at all. Um, because we do have, you know, between, like, against, like, non-creature decks, you have Legion's End, Tyrant Scorn, Ritual of Soot. That's six cards right there that just kill creatures. And so if your opponent's not playing creatures, that's six cards you want to take out of your deck. And we only had five 
before we just had two negate and three narset so we only had five spells so that's that's not even really enough hey quadri uh so against somebody that's not playing creatures we actually didn't even have enough things to bring in anyway so now we got we got seven so then we can also cut the Kefnet or a Liliana as well and bring in those seven. So I think that makes more sense there. Um. <laughs> hey monkey, I'm sure we had I'm sure we had a, a really great match though, Thunder. <laughs> yeah, I remember that five color Walker deck. That was pretty sweet. Um, but thanks, Quadri. Again, thank you so much. Um, could you know again could could go to three cry and and get up to the third nixel's cruelty kind of depends <clears throat> depends if if you are struggling more against gruel or against the cat decks um if we didn't get to place we didn't face any gruel or cat decks here either one um if the cat decks turn out to be pretty good matchups and you only need three cry of the carnarium then you could take out a cry and play another uh, black spell there. Um, yeah, yeah. Cruelty is very good against the Cavalier deck, also like that we played against earlier. The Jeskai fires Cavaliers, um, and it's just good against you know Questing Beast and and all the the Gruel attackers. So yeah, I could certainly see going to three and three there. I wouldn't mind that one bit and Kenrith and everything. So yeah, maybe we just do that. Um, okay, but there we go. So yeah, we just basically we we lost our first match because our mana was just horrific. You know, like it was just one of those where we didn't get to play magic. But we we won all our other four matches. Uh, we lost our first game of our next match too, and it was looking pretty bad. But then we came back and won the rest. The last one though should have maybe been a loss, but my opponent misclicked and we won. Kind of thing. Um, that was a, that was a close one. <clears throat> Um, but there we go. That's, so that's a demure control. All right. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like button over there. Also leave some comments on the channel as well. I'd appreciate both of those. And of course you can check out the Patreon page where I, uh, talked about yesterday of the different, um, or what I think is going to happen with the standard metagame now after the bannings. And I'll be writing about historic tomorrow. Um, that's my plan there. Um, so yeah, if you want to see my written stuff, check out to Patreon. If you want to help out, support the the channel as well. But that's it uh, here for Demir Control. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.